One of the most common questions I've been getting is how my gear is handling the hot temperatures uh, that I see during summertime. So first let me welcome everyone to this uh, summer heat review that I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to go over how my gear handled the summer and um, share some information that I found. I live uh, pretty close to Austin, Texas, so it's not the hottest place on the planet, but it does get pretty warm here. Uh, we had 90 days of over 100 degrees Fahrenheit uh, during the summer. You can see here I have a chart of the uh, August temperatures for 2023. And so they topped out at about 110. We had many days at, that, are, that were 105 or higher. My astrophotography rigs, three of them, uh, remained under uh, uh, Telegizmo 365 covers the entire time. So first I'm going to go ahead and share the information I got from the manufacturer of all the components. Uh, some of them list temperature ranges, some of them do not. Uh, then I actually have some recordings, some video recordings of me going outside and using a temperature sensor and getting actual readings. I get readings off the covers, I remove the covers, get readings off of the gear itself. I had a couple thermometers out there as well and we'll go over some observations uh, because I took the temperatures at different times during the day. And then we'll end up with, uh, with a review of how my uh, gear performed with the heat. All right, so the uh, mini PC, I'm using that Mealy Quieter 3. I was a little concerned about that device because it's a fanless mini PC. Uh, but you can see here, uh, and this is listed right off of uh, their page on Amazon, that the working temp of these uh, little mini PCs is up to 40C, which is, uh, I think, pretty darn good, actually. And storage temp is 80C. And so, 80C. So I'm using storage temp uh, as basically when, when, the, when the rigs are, during the day, the rigs are powered off. I cut power to them, and um, they're under the covers. So it's bas basically a storage type scenario. Now, ZWO did not list temperature ranges for all of their cameras. In fact, uh, the 533, I checked the ASI 2600 uh, and the ASI 6200, and I couldn't find temperature ranges anywhere. Uh, but I did see them on, like, their older cameras. The ASI 1600, it's right there in the manual. And so I'm kind of assuming uh, that even the newer cameras probably have similar ranges. And here we can see the working temp on the ASI 1600 is 45C and the storage temp is 60C. Now with Celestron I have an asterisk here because I couldn't find anywhere on Celestron's website where they documented temperature range on any of their gear. I looked for telescopes, I looked at the Celestron Edge white paper on uh, 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 white paper on the edge, uh, I looked at um, the AVX mount documentation, I couldn't find anything. I did find in Cloudy Nights where someone had pasted what I'm assuming is documentation from Celestron, and that's where I got the working temp 40C and storage temp 50C. So I don't know, maybe, maybe it's a case where some of these manufacturers had shared this information in the past, and going forward they're not. It's, it's a little weird, uh, and, uh, but that's, that's what I was able to find. Now, what I did find on Celestron's website was this statement. And basically, they're saying they have no stated operating temperature range, <laughs> which, is, which is fine. Uh, but then they, they're using words like reasonable care and extreme conditions. But they didn't define what extreme conditions are. So... You know, is is Central Texas heat extreme condition, or are we having, are we talking like uh, the Sahara Desert extreme? You know, I don't know. That's it's. It, I found this a bit vague and honestly a little disappointing. It's almost like they give themselves enough room so that if you reach out to them with a problem, maybe they can still blame the environment. Maybe not. I don't know. But it would have been nice if they had given us hard set numbers like what you see in the IT industry, which is where I work. Everything has got temperature specs, operating specs, and storage specs. 
and that's what I'm used to seeing. So a little disappointed that I couldn't get that from Celestron. I did send an email off to Skywatcher because I couldn't find any uh, specs on Skywatcher's website either. Uh, but Skywatcher's tech support's always been pretty responsive to me. And this is the message that I got from them. So again, not really uh, any kind of specific information, but I'm taking this as, a, as an assurance that there's no problem with my gear, with, with my Skywatcher gear under 365 covers. All right, so let's jump outside and I'll show the video of me pulling measurements off of the gear and then we'll come back to the um, uh, deck here and go over the findings. All right, let's get some temperature readings. Uh, this is what I'm using right here, this guy. Not, not a very expensive unit, uh, but these have been out in the sun. Uh, today's temperature was 106. It is a little after 6 o'clock. I got a regular thermometer here. Let's see if I can get that in there. Um, just looking at this, it's showing a little bit over 100 right now, about 40, no, no, about 45 Celsius. So let's get some readings here. All right, don't know how well that's showing up. Let me uh, switch it to Celsius. Yeah. So 65 Celsius, that's pretty hot. Yeah, 149 Fahrenheit, it's on the cover. Take a look over here. AVX, similar temperatures, 150. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uncover this and we'll get a temperature of what the gear is at. All right, let's try this again. And look at that, temperatures are the same. 140, this area right here, 140. Have it on the mount itself. 140, 60 degrees Celsius. Pretty hot. Pretty hot. About 40 on that mini PC there. 40, 142 is what I'm saying. 140 camera. Yep, 140. So the whole thing is 140 Fahrenheit. 60.5. All right. So uh, I was actually surprised to see that the temperatures on the uh, outside of the cover, <laughs> covers were hitting 140 degrees Fahrenheit. I mean, that is really, that is hot. So 107 or 8 uh, ambient and 140 on the gear. And then I was a bit surprised uh, in that video, at least. It probably doesn't show. But when I uncovered it and took readings off of the equipment itself and seeing those 140 degree temps there again, so it seemed like the cover wasn't doing anything as far as temperatures uh, were concerned. But I continue to take uh, multiple readings across different days at different times. And what I found is that the covers are delaying the increase in temperature. So mid-afternoon or early afternoon, uh, the cover was already at 140 Fahrenheit but the gear was at 120 Fahrenheit. So it's delaying the heat up, but eventually the gear is going to hit that, that upper temperature anyway. So it does seem, uh, going back to what the temperature range was on that AVX, on that comment that I found, and some of the comments in that Celestron statement, that maybe under the covers I'm getting pretty close to what they would consider the top end. Uh, but I think I'm all right. I think as long as the temps, uh, the, the local temps don't get too much above 110 in the summers, I'm probably all right. Maybe if we got up to 115 or 120, the temperatures like our friends out in Yuma are, are reaching. Maybe in those environments, I might want to consider bringing this stuff in. At least the, uh, at least the scopes, right? The, those EQ6s are too heavy. I'll bring the AV AVX in, though. 
All right. Now, with that said, uh, summer is basically over. I think there's two or three days left in summer as I record this video. Uh, the rigs were out there every night, all day. The telescopes were out there on the rigs. I only bring the telescopes in if we're going to get a storm with high winds and a lot of rain. The mounts stayed out there the entire time. And I really didn't run into any problems. Uh, the the two problems I, I encountered this summer, and you can see them listed here, is one of the one of the EQ6s, the one that the Edge rides on, developed some uh, play in the RA axis. And um, I did a, a I remember watching some videos uh, from a couple of my YouTube friends, right? Uh, Glenn over at Astro Bloke and Quiv at um, the Lazy Geek. They both have videos about adjusting and tweaking the, the EQ6. And there are two small Allen keys and then four or small Allen screws and then four larger ones that uh, that you can work on for both the deck and the RA, right? So there's the four larger ones, you loosen it up, you basically back them off just a tiny little bit. And then the two smaller ones is like kind of like a push-pull. So you tighten the one in the back and you loosen the one on the front and I did this in the dark it took me like five minutes very minor adjustment I took the play out of it and the mount was guiding back to normal so now was that due to the heat or was that due to age I mean maybe heat played a little bit of a role in it but I'm hearing about people needing to adjust these over time anyway so I don't think this was really something you can blame the high summer temps on and also my 294 mono started getting condensation on the sensor. And uh, I mean, again, that's something that's going to happen no matter what. So I don't think that that's a, uh, a temperature issue either. Uh, and, and I resolved that. I, th I had already purchased a couple of these little uh, ZWO heating strips that they make for their line of cameras that don't have a built-in uh, heater. So I put that on there and I also opened up the camera uh, and recharged the, the uh, little tablets in there. And of course I added some dust inside the chamber so now I had to take new flats. <laughs> but anyway, that camera is running fine. So those two minor issues that I came into, uh, probably not related to the heat. All right, so I don't plan to make any changes. I'm leaving my gear out there, uh, but but because it does get hot out here, anytime I add some new equipment, I am going to look for the temperature uh, uh, specs and make sure that I'm not putting myself in a situation where I can damage some expensive gear. In fact, that might be something that I look look at before making a purchase, especially for, say, a new mount or something like that. I want to make sure that I'm not buying something that can't handle uh, the summers down here in Texas. All right, and so finally, I just want to make it clear, I'm not really making a recommendation for, for anyone. I'm sharing my experiences. I'm not telling you that you can leave your stuff outside if it gets, if your temperatures hit 140 degrees and everything's going to be fine. All right, so always check with the manufacturer your gear. If you have any doubts, check with them. And if your telescope melts like this one over here, you know, it's, it's not my fault. Ultimately, your gear is your responsibility. Uh, so with that, you know, please share your thoughts in the comments. Uh, I wouldn't mind getting a dis discussion going uh, down there about uh, what everyone's temperature range is like. I mean, down here, we're, we're dealing with heat, but... Uh, my friends up far north, they're on the opposite end of that spectrum where you get really, really cold temperatures. Uh, so, you know, let me let me know what you guys think. Uh, other than that, please like and subscribe and clear skies. Oh, uh, real quick, I wanted to show uh, what I did to the scope. No permanent damage. This stuff uh, comes right off comes up nice and clean. You may ask what the stuff is. I'm sure some of you know. This is masking putty. So we all need something to do right when it's cloudy out 
and one of my other hobbies is putting together these guys here. So it's about 90% complete kit and um, the masking putty helps with the painting. That's all. Alright, clear skies everyone.